witchlings, welcome back to my channel. Well, it is me, your local chaotic witch aunt. So today's video is going to be talking about my experience working with one of my deities and it's kind of be the start of a series where I talk about my experiences with all the different deities that I have worked with in my six, seven years as a practitioner. I'm going to be talking about what they gave me while I worked with them as well as what kind of offerings they like, the best ways to worship them, how I personally worship them, etc. But anyways, that is what we are talking about today. We're starting off strong today. We are starting off with Lady Freya and technically Lady Freya is repetitive because Freya just means lady. So if you aren't aware of who Freya is, she is a Norse goddess, queen of the Valkyries. She rules over Folkvanger and she is a goddess of love beauty, lust, and war. She is also a goddess of magic. She taught Seether through the gods. She is just a presence, a full force to behold. And if you work with Freya, you know what I'm talking about. Freya is the type of goddess that I could not procrastinate. I cannot push anything off. She would be on me to do it and get it done. Freya came into my life about a year, two years ago maybe. Um, and I, over periods of time, became a devotee to her. I had an inkling that she was a patron, but she is not, or a patroness as I call her. My patroness, or my patron god, is Diana. So I was a devotee for, to Floya for the entire period of time that she was there, before I fully kind of started on my folk magic journey. I am gonna make a video to updating you guys with what my practice looks like now, what I'm doing, uh, who I'm working with, everything like that, just like I did a year ago. If if you are new to my channel, you will see that video as an intro. But Freya came into my life right after I was in kind of a rough relationship for about two years. Um, and she came into my life guns, guns a swingin, full swingin. She came in um, and the way that she announced herself to me was by sending me feral cats in heat screaming outside of my apartment window for about a week. Literally like fully. Oof, it was a lot. There was a lot of energy happening. As well as this, I was receiving her name very randomly, even though I had never researched anything about the Norse gods. I was getting Instagram stuff with her name in it. I had never heard of her before, and so I was like, okay, let me look into this. And after kind of periods of time and realizing that the feral cats and heat were her, I went into the period of beginning to worship her. And I want to say that it was probably January, February 2020 ish, maybe a little later that I began working with her. And throughout that period of a year, because she left um, recently, so she was here probably for just around over a year or so, give or take, because my memory is splotchy, I learned a lot. Um, Freya is the type of goddess that, above all, she wants you to love yourself. And it's not necessarily loving yourself in a way that is ingenuine or in the way that other people will love you, but loving yourself authentically for who you are and what you bring to the table. She pushed me past my boundaries so many times and not in a bad way, in the way of testing me and seeing where I was going to do and pushing me to be better. Throughout that one year period, there was just a lot of shadow work that I was doing with my image, my love for myself, my acceptance for myself and who I was, making sure that I was des I deserve what I am given and I'm getting what I deserve. And Freya, Freya is quite, she's quite the, like I've said this before, she's quite the goddess, you know? Um, so when she comes to you, you realize that she's there. She's also one of the goddesses that I noticed that she definitely loves more intricate, expensive offerings, which is okay. I did a whole TikTok video about how I was in Denver at a metaphysical store with my friend and I wanted to get Freya some amber and there were no little amber pieces left. There were only big amber pieces that were expensive and I ended up getting a big amber piece for her, which I still have and still use in my practice. It was definitely one of those things where she was so there for me throughout that entire year that we were working together. There was a lot of, like I said, tests, basically throwing things in my path and seeing if I could learn the lesson that she wanted me to learn. Worship-wise, most of the things I did for Freya, those are my dogs, was self-love. I did acts of 
unequivocal acceptance of self, unequivocal self-love for her, and she accepted it. it. was something that she definitely appreciated and was into. During this period of working with Freya, I was also getting into glamour magic. I was getting into more advanced areas of magic. She taught me a few things and spells and such before she stopped working with me, um, just kind of in the process of getting me ready to move completely into my work with Diana and to be accepted by my patron goddess, even though she's been around forever. <laughs> Freya was there as a kind of pillar of my deity work from for a very long time. She was there throughout my work with Apollo and Artemis, my work with Nath, my work with the Morrigan, and until up until the point when Diana started coming forward more strongly and I started being pulled to folk magic and my Italian heritage more and I went in that direction and left her behind. She definitely left a lasting impression on me and my practice. In terms of, you know, colors, Floya is glamorous. She has a beautiful necklace called Blizzinger that she, I believe, slept with 12 dwarves for. So she wants the best of the best. I wouldn't say ever that she's a petty goddess, not in any way, shape, or form, but I do think that she is a goddess that demands a lot of your attention. She was one of the goddesses that really focused my work and deity work for a long period of time until Diana. And I do think it's funny because Diana is similar. Diana doesn't like sharing, which is why I only have two good deities now and then the Archangel, because Diana doesn't like sharing at all in the same way that Freya did. Freya was pushing me to do a lot of things in devotion of her, such as learning runes, which I never got around to, doing divination, making sure that my relationships were in check, that I wasn't dawdling on anyone who wasn't worthy of my time. While she was a very strong guiding figure, Freya is definitely a goddess that will not assist you with something unless you truly need it. Um, I have tried calling her in for spells before, and it's definitely been the instance of she's like, why do you need my help with this? You know how to do this. When I was getting more in touch with my medium skills, I was a lot more comfortable receiving spells, downloads, whatever you want to call them from Foya herself. So she taught me a few tips and tricks, like I said, before she left. But she's definitely someone that will, as I say, her and Morgan are similar because they both kind of throw you into battle and just let you have at it. There's not a lot of um, training wheels with Freya. There wasn't any training wheels. Like I fully had her, when, and I was working with Artemis at the beginning of the time, so her and Artemis fully like broke up my relationship when I would not leave it without any divine intervention. <laughs> There's no training wheels when you work with her, and when she comes, she comes in like, just going. Like, full-blown cat chariot, let's go. And what I mean by no training wheels is there was a lot of, like I said, tests. So let's say she wanted me to learn a lesson around setting boundaries or um, not giving so much, some, someone so much energy when they weren't giving a lot of energy in return. Um, any kind of lesson like that, instead of kind of giving subtle hints that, that we're going in that direction, for a period of time, things would get really difficult. And it was all around that one particular area that the lesson needed to be learned in. And this happened every like month or two months, this kind of testing as I called it. But let's say I was, you know, doing shadow work or struggling with setting boundaries. Freya would send me things like in the span of like a week of just all testing my boundaries all at the same time. So it's really, like you get a shield and a sword and you're thrown into battle with Freya. Um, and this, like I said, is just my experience with the goddess. Everyone can have such different experiences in deity work and that's what's so amazing about it. But she definitely gave me the vibe of there was no hand holding, there was no babying. And she 
she took me seriously, she didn't treat me like a child. And I say this in a lot of ways because I have seen a lot of content on the internet of, you know, calling goddesses mothers or people feeling mothered by a goddess, and I never saw Freya in that position. Um, I never have really seen her in the position of a mother. She's not a motherly deity, which I find interesting because a lot of times people will use the term mother for goddesses like Ekate, and I'm like, oh. I don't know if I can see that in a motherly position. Versus Hera, Demeter, these goddesses that have, you know, marriage and mothership within their realm of patronage, I can definitely see, you know, feeling like that goddess is stepping into a role for you. But for me, it was never really like that with Freya. I never felt like she was taking the place of my mother. I felt like she was a teacher. I felt like I had been taken under her wing in this, you know, period of time, and I was just being taught ruthlessly taught, but taught nonetheless. <laughs> and you know, she was the one who brought Artemis in to help me with independence and certain areas, and then from there Morrigan was brought in to help me with sovereignty, boundaries, and throughout these periods of deities kind of coming in for short periods of time throughout this past year, she was the one that was there throughout all of it. The way Freya communicated with me was very interesting because she, you know, has two cats or northern kind of wild cats that draw her carriage. And cats are very much something that is associated with her and a big symbol of hers. So whenever I was feeling like her presence was needed or I needed some support or guidance, my cat would come sleep in my bed. Which, I don't know if you know this, but my cat never sleeps in my bed. My cat loves my sister's bed and rarely comes in here. But whenever I felt like I needed a little extra push, whenever she needed to talk to me or was trying to get a message across, she would send my cat in to sleep with me. And then whenever I figured the message out or got through the period of time when I was needing that support, the cat would go away. The other um, symbol of Freya that I am very familiar with was hawks and falcons. We don't have any falcons in the area, so I do think hawks were sent almost as a substitute for her um, because they're a little similar, kind of look the same, not really. But hawks have always been a big messenger animal for my family as well as me, and I used to have a hawk sit outside in the tree, right outside the window that you guys are near, and it would just sit there sit outside the house and I would see hawks a lot lot more when I was working with her and throughout the year I was working with her than I do now. Now more often I see other types of birds like owls, crows, but they we also have a lot of crows in the area so blue jays which have always been a messenger animal for me but not a lot of hawks and I do think that there's definitely been like this change in my cat's behavior towards me as well at, after I finish working with Freya. Definitely hasn't sleep, slept with me in like a while. He's like, you know what, I don't need to do this anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, I'm going to take a tea break. I think my tea is still really hot. Ah, so good. Ugh. What's your favorite type of tea? Comment down below. So because I worked with Freya for such a long period of time, she had a vast amount of offerings um, and you don't necessarily need that amount of offerings for her. When I started working with her, I found a lotion that had some scents and herbs in it that are associated with her. So like roses, primroses, that kind of stuff. And I would draw sigils on my body and lotion myself every night in honor of her. The other things that she enjoys, you know, amber, very big thing. Um, I took forever to get her some amber and she loves it. The other things I had is I would have cat whiskers and rabbit nails dedicated to her because rabbits are also associated with Freya. As well as that, she had a candle that I set up that was there all the time, a little Queen of Wands card. I can probably find a picture of what my altar looked like with her on it. Um, and I'll have Sally put it right here. I think part of it was definitely that I worked with her for such a long period of time, but also that I found that a lot of things came into my possession, not even necessarily by me buying them, but by people sending it to me that were for her, like a pearl, which was a really weird gift, but I got a pearl and I, she wanted it. I got a golden Rider Waite tarot that she wanted, which have now, has now been given away um, because I couldn't bear myself to use it. All these other things that she asked for and were associated with her just came into my possession via like 
promo boxes or gifts and it was a really interesting time versus with Diana Diana's definitely <laughs> definitely a goddess that doesn't love a lot of offerings she's really down with like a little bit of apple and some wine every once in a while um, I do things on the full moon for her most times and well she has a statue too which I think she she's like well, I got a statue, so I probably shouldn't ask for all these little things, because I... She was my only deity for a while to have a statue, and there was definitely that air of like, yeah, I'm the one with a statue <laughs> for a, a decent period of time, because all the other deities had candles. And it was funny, because I was looking to get statues for Freya and Morgan, and they both ended up leaving right before I could get them. But timing is weird. The universe really throws you for a loop. Any kind of interest in Freya, I would bet your sources on Norse paganism pretty heavily because there are a lot of authors in that area that are problematic in terms of white supremacism, um, especially some, you know, more popular authors. I just recently removed a book called like Norse Paganism for the Solitary Practitioner from my list. I actually had the book and could, didn't get to reading it because of I was so busy. I just removed it because the person is like definitely white supremacist flavored. And so it's definitely one of those things where I learn from my mistakes and thoroughly vet your resources in this area. Um, if you're interested, I know Warrior Witch Nike talks a lot about Norse paganism and Norse heathenism. I always recommend kind of going through on the internet first and looking up information on Freya. For me, even though I read her myths, a lot of the stuff from Freya came from my own experiences with her. I read the Poetic and Prose Eddas, but at the same time, she kind of created her own expectations for me and herself, and I learned from other practitioners that worked with Freya as well. It's a little different with Diana now because I've been researching Diana for so long, and she's like, hey buddy, how you doing? And I'm like, ah! Yeah, and I'm definitely going to be talking about the other goddesses and gods that I have worked with in the past. But Freya, I wanted to dedicate the first video to because I worked with her for so long and I I feel like my experiences could help someone who's either interested with working her or finding that they are starting to be pulled into her orbit. But yeah, the next video is either going to be on Apollo or Artemis because those were the other deities that I worked with. I did work with deities way back in the day um, when I was like 16, 17. Shouldn't have done that. I was not ready to start deity work at all. Uh, <laughs> but I do have some experiences in the past with uh, Kronanos, which I now refer to as Diana Sortagni. Um, sometimes Lucifotis or Diana's Lucifoto was presented as Carnanos and presented very early in my practice and has been a pillar of my worship and work since I was um, a youngling. I also, for some reason, went through my old book of shadows and found Bast, Bastet, and Persephone as deities I worked with. I don't know how that happened. I don't remember that, but I think when I was 16, 17, I was fully like, yes, these deities. And then meanwhile, Diana Lucifer was just sitting there, the only one here being like, I don't really know about that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm definitely going to be talking about either Diana Lucifer slash Kronano slash uh, Pagni next, or Artemis or Apollo, which I worked with for a period of time. Nath is going to be on this list more again. I worked with, I feel like, a decent amount of deities in my like two to four years of deity work when the majority of the time it's just been like Diana Lucifoto or Foya or Diana but I do want I do think sharing my experiences would help and this is a monster of a video so we're gonna end it here and scene um, thank you so much for watching if you have any questions comments concerns leave it down below if you want you can turn the bell on subscribe like the video whatever you want to do but no pressure remember to drink water and have a really good rest of your day Sabenedica.